Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about sampling. Let's look at okay. So some sampling issues we want to cover today. First of all, uh, let's look at our learning objectives. Number one, to understand the concept of sampling. Number two, to learn the steps in developing a sampling plan. Number three, to understand the concepts of sampling error and a non-sampling error. Number four, to understand the differences between probability sampling and non-probability -prob sampling. So what is a sampling? Now before we talk about sampling, we need to first understand the concept of population. Now we all know what is a population, but uh, in the statistic terms, population has a specific definition. We also call the population in the universe a population of interest. And the test will give you say entire group of people about whom information is needed. For example, we want to understand what Cal State Florida students look like in terms of its demographics, psychographics, geographics, um, lifestyle, activities, opinion, everything. If you want to know about the Cal State Florida students, and uh, this becoming our focus of study, it's population. So it's universe, a population of interest. So basically, the sampling is a process of obtaining information from a subset of a larger group. In other words, it's we're trying to get some information from a small percentage of a large group, a small percentage of population. In the case of Cal State Fullerton example, and the student's population is 40,000. And when we do sampling, we may just sample 1% of the population, let's say 400 students, from a population of 40,000. And uh, to understand the concept of sampling and sample, we also need to compare two concepts Census versus sample. Now, what is census? Obviously, census is really basically we collect information from every member of the population of interest. So, you know, for example, now we are in 2020, we're doing census. You know, the US government is gathering information from every single member of the US population. So, it's very important to get it everybody's information collected. So that's a census. But sample is a subset of all the members of our population of interest. And a subset is uh, typically required to be statistically representative of the general population. So sample, obviously, whether it is statistically representative depends on its sampling method. So sample is a subset. You know, in the case of Cal State Fullerton, 40,000 students, we got a sample of 1%, which is 400. Okay. This, this is like a process of sampling. We have seven steps. So we'll uh, talk about one at a time. Step number one, define the population interest. Step two, choose the data collection method. Step three, identify a sampling frame. Step four, select a sampling method. Step five, determine the sample size. Step six, develop operating procedures for selecting sample elements. And last step, execute the operational sampling plan. Step number one, defining the population of interest. This is actually a pretty straightforward kind of step. The basic is we want to know who or which group we want to study. Okay? So we can define a group by uh, 
geographic area, for example, uh, say all people residing in the Orange County, or you know that's really a geographic region. Or we can do demographics. Let's say we'll talk about uh, uh, in the case, like for example, uh, we can choose study the Calistoga student population. You know, using the the uh, uh, using the ethnicity, for example, as uh, one of the possible possible defining variable. Let's say we want to study Cal State Fullerton's, uh, want to study the Latino students among Cal State Fullerton students' population. So Latino would be, uh, it's an ethnicity type of variable we define the population interest. Other times we can do based upon the product usage. Now this is very important because we know that uh, heavy users medium users, light users, they are different. And uh, for marketers, most likely we want to find out to the heavy users. And we, we typically uh, have a, like a rule to say 80% of the product consumption is, you know, is consumed by 20% of the users. So this is an 80-20 uh, rule. Especially in, in, in the case of beer consumption or, or other alcoholic beverage consumption. And also we can look at this stuff, let's say we can do, look at the, uh, awareness, like product awareness. So uh, we want only study the people who are aware of our company's product or aware of a company's advertising. So there are different ways of defining the population of interest. Number two, choosing a data collection method. Now this is also discussed in the chapter on questionnaire design in the sense that we, there are variety of ways of collecting data, you know, in the, in the, in the uh, survey methods. For example, we can do face-to-face uh, -face more intercepts. We can also use telephone to gather data or we can use snail mail, or we can also use internet. So different data collection methods have different implications for the type of the uh, sampling plan we have. Number three step, uh, basically this is identify sampling frame. Sampling frame sometimes also are called working population. That is basically we need to get a list of members of elements of the population for units to be sampled or to be selected. So this is a list. In other words, a list typically contains uh, the members of the populations like uh, contact information, uh, email address, uh, or physical address, or sometimes cell number. You know the ways to of communicating with them to gather data from the, uh, those members of the population. And uh, now, obviously we can say a city's telephone book could be used as a sample frame of ref uh, sampling frame because uh, you know, it's rather available, we don't need to spend money on it, it just, it's free. So consider some of the advantages and disadvantages of using that sample frame. Obviously, uh, you know, the, the telephone book, yeah, and, and then, you know, we, have, we will talk about landline, uh, land-based land uh, telephone lines, and obviously we don't have a telephone book consisting of people's cell numbers, obviously. So still, so obviously you can see increasingly nowadays, uh, landline users are are uh, different from uh, those who just use cell phone numbers, right? So those are the kind of disadvantage, obviously. It's incomplete of the population of what we want to study. For example, uh, let's say study the city of Fullerton, you have a telephone book, and then the people who have land lines typically are different from people who just have, uh, you know, like, you know uh, land lines that 
what kind of people who have landlines? Think about it. And uh, you know, maybe uh, we we have we don't have pre complete uh, picture of the differences, but we kind of get a sense of the the the, the problem of using that at the sampling frame. It's in other words, they're not representative of the population of interest, like for example, city of Fullerton's uh, residents. And obviously, the advantage is that it's free. I mean, it's very available. You don't need to spend money on you know, getting that sampling free. Now, in the business of direct marketing, and uh, oh, many times we, 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 we do need to purchase uh, a list, like a, you know, like, like a list of someone, a list of some population, list of, you know, so that we can really try to uh, target uh, precisely those people. So some companies actually they sell those lists and there are all kinds of lists you know that you can sell. Uh, you know like they, they, they'll use uh, census data actually. Uh, it's actually it's free information and the US census data try you know they can um, research, they can compile different type of lists and to to be sold for profit. So the sampling frame is something that uh, very, very important. We need, I mean, you know, we have to know uh, how to get a hold of those uh, elements in a sample. 